Okay. Um, are we ready? I think we're ready. We are so excited. We have a guest. Oh my gosh. For, well, first of all, we're at SHOT Show in we're Las at Shot Vegas Show. right now, guys. So we're bringing you some amazing guests. I feel like we're starting off on the perfect foot here today. This is going to be my favorite, I think. I think it might, might be my favorite, too. So I mean, the other ones are going to be good. No, they'll be great. But they just won't top this. And who do we have? We have Renee Rouleau. She is a celebrity esthetician, and she is a founder of her own company. So, Renee, welcome to Drinking Broettes. Thank you. Yeah, we're happy to have you. And, of course, we're going to ask you a million of questions. Yeah. So, um, um, our listeners, mostly women, mm -hmm. mostly women in and around our 30s. Okay. Let's just say that. Yeah. Sure. Um, and we're always looking for things that we should like at this point you know a certain point you're just looking for anything i know there's no <laughs> fixes. quick fixes i know it comes a lot from like you know doing a regiment preventative care but aftercare like anything that you can do so we have you get here that, though um yeah go i ahead. think we need to just figure out how you start it and like, just tell us a little bit about yourself and where you got to where you are today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, Renee Rouleau, I am a celebrity esthetician. I've been an esthetician for 30 years. And um, are you going to be able to talk about anybody? Yes. That you oh my gosh, I go ahead. Well, <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, Sorry. Yeah. First of all, can I just hit too that she just said 30 years? Like you look young as can be. And she just said she was an esthetician for 30 years. Can we like, you ask look my you? Age. Is that, I, this yeah. is horrible, but can we ask you? No, no, no worries. How old uh, you I'm are? 50. I turned I turned 50 I don't this past that. August. <laughs> I, I already talked to her. I was like, I feel like you're involved in some type of witchcraft because you don't, you don't look 30. I mean, you do not look 50. You look 30. Yeah. You oh look my age. Oh, my Thank gosh. You. you look amazing. Thanks. So, okay. obviously, the you're doing something helps. right. You know, that kind of throws people off, too. <laughs> no, it makes me want to do it. Does it I know. Enough? It's I easy. You I just do it with color depositing hair conditioner. I don't ever go to this. I mean, I get my highlights at a salon. Right. But every time I... Uh, shampoo i use overtone and uh nice. and it deposits it so it's like super low maintenance oh so God. i just I mean, use that's it as the my best conditioner way. yeah easy looks really good on you Thanks. sorry we yeah so we, we, we interrupt a lot so Carry yeah on. so i um celebrity esthetician and also um i own my own company based in austin it's called renee rouleau skincare and i've been in business for 23 years and i have my own skincare line based on nine skin types and we can get into that a little bit like my whole skin typing yes. philosophy but um yeah so i work with celebrities i'm a traveling esthetician so i go to la in fact i'm going out um uh, this week because one of my uh, clients, Demi Lovato, is performing at the Grammys. What? And so, gotta give her the ring. Do you know Rilo Hannah? Oh my gosh. Do you know Hannah Lux Davis? Uh -uh. She it sounds, I mean, I've heard that name. She directs a lot of uh, yes. Demi yes. stuff. I think if you were there around the documentary yes. time, she yeah. was like just super cool. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah, yeah. All right. She's cool. um, Demi's been my client for 10 years. Oh, nice. So and so she she's, seems awesome, by the way, too. Oh, she's amazing. Is she she uh, she's from Dallas and I started my company in Dallas. Um, oh, so perfect. I lived there for 19 years. So that's how we met. So perfect. she's been kind of one of my longtime loyalists. Um, but I also work with um uh, all the Riverdale girls, you know, that oh show. Gosh. So Madeline Pesh and Lily Reinhardt and Camila Mendez. I actually just funny. So I'm here in Vegas for just a fun weekend and yeah. went and saw the fight. And then, um, but Camila Mendez needed a facial. She um, texted me like Friday night and was like, oh, and I didn't, she, I didn't know she was going to the SAG Awards uh -huh. because she was kind of being someone's guest. And yeah. so, cause normally I do go out for award shows. And so she's like, oh, can I get a facial? And so Saturday I had it, you know, I didn't get in until super late on Friday night, had to get up at five 30 on Saturday morning, fly out to LA, go get all my facial equipment, go to her house, give wow. her a facial drop off the stuff come back get ready for the fight and then you know and you so. do that because you're just there for your clients yeah no matter yeah. what exactly it's just like yeah you, when they need me yeah. they need me you know and a lot That's of amazing, in though. a lot of you know so a lot of these girls they're younger and they have breakouts and so a lot you know so there's kind of a lot of you know a little maintenance that goes along with when you're working with people who are in their 20s but yeah but yeah i've worked um i mean susan sarandon and a uh, mick dreamy oh, yeah mick dreamy. it's so funny too because like i never he watched great yeah, i, know he does I never great. watched gray's anatomy so i you know i didn't really like, yeah. have a kind of a I, thing like, for him but when i met yeah. him in person i was like I was like, my Whoa. mom and my sister watched it, so I knew who he was, and I've seen yeah. like a few yeah. episodes. So you're saying like in person, in person he's like sexy, sexy. even better. Yeah, I was wow. like, he just has. He's can I ask like a aura? weird question? Yeah. Are you taller than him? Yeah, is Am he? I yeah, taller? is he short? 
Oh. Cause how tall are you? Five nine. Okay. So he might be like right at yeah, your eye line. Yeah, no, I don't think he. Would, but yeah, he's like definitely he's definitely on the shorter side. He's for a, sure. Yeah, they but, most yeah. of them are. But but anyway, but um, but yeah, the list goes on and on. Like Jessica Simpson was probably my first celebrity client way wow. back in the day because she oh was gosh. from Dallas. And was that when she did the TV show too with uh, her and Nick Lachey? Actually, no. Interesting fun fact. Um, so remember she was like a Christian singer. Yep. That's how she yes. kind of started. Well, when she started coming to me, she was auditioning for Dawson's Creek. What? Yes. I had no oh idea she gosh. tried out for that show. Yeah. <laughs> We're so getting anyway. all the inside scoops here. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I've worked, I mean, uh, Ewan McGregor, um, 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 I can see him, Emma Roberts, totally going. I mean, to you. I can I know, ask you like million, what people, you what guys kind of come in for differently yeah. than girls, or you just do? Is it just across everyone the, the board? Same? Everyone, yeah. Needs I to mean, basically majority of my clients are females for okay. sure. Um, but I think you know anyone in the public eye, like they need and to pay attention to that same. stuff. Yeah, you know, they're like, I mean, they're guys in general. Celebrities are not. I mean, they're not going to use all the steps that yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. girl will in their routine yeah. so i always try to like kind of keep it simple and kind of low maintenance but but yeah i mean they'll always do what i say but because i mean everybody everybody wants to look their best it's right true. so yeah. it's true yeah. what do you normally so when you have all these people who come to you right mm-hmm. you said facials are one thing what do they normally are asking for um to help upkeep their skin yeah, I mean, I think everybody has the same goals, which uh-huh. is just like how to make my skin look its best and yeah. how, do, how can I troubleshoot some of the things that I'm experiencing. So, you know, everybody has, whether it's puffiness, whether it's dark circles, whether it's clogged pores and bumps, whether it's adult hormonal breakout, whether it's fine lines are coming in. Yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's got something that when they look in the mirror, they're mm-hmm. like, ugh, if that could yes. be better. And so yes. it's really just about um, really understanding their goals and and trying to you know, as much as possible, give solutions for those goals. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I know for me, like, I don't, did you ever get acne? No. Okay. So I never had acne when I was younger. And I know that once I hit like 29, I got into my thirties cause I'm 33 right now. I hit, I got acne. Yeah. And to me, that was just a big blow. Yeah. Right. Right. Well, cause, cause most har- people also like, they think they're like, Oh, phew. I oh, made I it on my teenagers. Like this, yeah, you know, teenagers. Well, and the thing is too, no. I started to get wrinkles I was starting to get wrinkles yeah. and then I was getting acne yeah. and I was like, make up your mind skin. Yeah. Like what am I older? Or am I young? Right, right. And I was getting both. <laughs> and so I was trying to find products and solutions for that. And of yeah. course, like I got, you know, um, hyperpigmentation and scars and marks, marks and stuff like and, that. Yeah. And so what would you recommend for anyone who's going through that adult acne phase yeah, sure. and who's having to deal with those things? So let me talk to you a little bit about my, about my skincare philosophy because yeah. this will address that. So when I first became an esthetician, um, I learned really quickly that the skin was really unique and complex and that, and when I started um, selling a skincare line when I, you know, when I first started, you know, most skincare lines are always just in, to this day too, they're catered to dry, normal and oily or mm. for all skin types. And so I was having to kind of like mix and match and customize people's routines among many different lines to give people what they needed. Yes, and was. so when I started my company in Dallas 23 years ago, I said, there has to be a better solution than this. So I determined that by that time I had already been an esthetician for seven years. And so I decided that there were nine types of skin like that was my experience wow. I broke it down yeah. into nine skin types instead of the instead, stand, of, the instead three. of the three yeah and so I built um a skincare line based uh, you know on each skin type being able to get their curated routine and so right you know if you go to uh Renee we have a skin type quiz people can take the quiz oh figure out which I the love nine skin types they are and then they'll get a recommended routine and so but but specifically about kind of what you're dealing with mm-hmm. is I have a skin type that specifically is like that? hey I get breakouts, but I still want anti-aging. And then also how oh often gosh. you get breakouts, th- certain skin types, because, you know, breaking out around, you know, Your that period. time of the month sure. is different from getting a yeah. new blemish every day. Yeah, right. Yes. And so, so anyway, so the point is, is that like, you know, you really want to, use products that are specifically hitting all of your points mm-hmm. and that's the problem with most skincare lines is for you you're either forced to have to treat it like a teenager yes. and then dry you out which you know isn't doing anything for your wrinkles Correct. or if you're like oh i want anti-aging you're up against gooey greasy mm-hmm. gonna cl- clog my pores and which so is even, makes it even worse yeah so i mean you know so there's just nobody really looks at skin the way i do so you know but again, people are kind of mixing and matching. But when you get put in your skin type, every product that touches your skin, they all work synergistically. Every product is kind of addressing all of the different things. Mm-hmm. And then collectively, you're going to get better results because 
you know, it's a perfect blend of, of what your skin needs. So I realize that's kind of just promoting my own skincare line, but that's kind of the solution that I offer for people. Sure. But it's, and it's almost like the, like a bra size where you yeah. finally get that yes. right, right. bra it, size. It, right. And, or when someone tells you like, oh, that's actually the fit that you're supposed to, where it's like this many years we've been going right. and looking <laughs> like, I know if I take that quiz, I'm going to be like, I have been doing it you know wrong. What I'm saying? Yeah. Like everything wrong, which yeah, everybody, when, when, when they get is. put into their skin type, they go, Whoa. Like they're like, how did you know this was me? Yes. Yeah. Because it's, you know, checking all the boxes. Well, the I most, feel like it would be that kind of feeling where you you're know, like, the most frustrating I've been doing thing, that my whole right? life. It's frustrating. And when that's you look what I wanted website. to. Yeah. That's what I wanted to get in with you. To, I saw I've read a couple articles that you wrote like five don'ts past yeah. 30 mm. or five yeah. things that you should absolutely be doing past 30 yeah because most of our listeners are sure in 30s late 30s for sure know. yeah so um so yeah I have um just for your viewers and listeners I have a really popular blog that okay. I've had for 10 years I have you know over a thousand more than way more than a thousand posts but um um, and so it's all my best advice. And so it's, you know, okay. everything. So anyone, you know, after listening to this, sign yeah. up for our emails and you'll get all of our you know, blog newest blog posts and, but great information. And it really breaks it down into kind of like no nonsense information. And yeah. it's not just sitting, you trying to sell you something. It's mm-hmm. like things that people can learn because I started out as when I started, I knew that people were so misinformed and people want information. They just, you you know, you hear 10 different stories and people just like, just tell me what I need to do and whatever. So I definitely encourage people to go look at my blog and you will literally become a smart skincare consumer. And that's kind of what one of my missions is. So being an educational company. That's like a free, because that's the thing too is you don't trust, like if you go to, you know, my dermatologist or whatever. They're always pushing products. Yeah. And so don't, you don't necessarily trust what they're saying, but you're just, putting it out there yeah. so that people know about their skin yeah. and if they want to use your right, right. they can your right but they don't can. have to but if like, well but, i but asked her too if i was like is your blog one of those because you'll see this sometimes where you'll start reading amazing information right and then they'll like, like make you click like hey click here for more no yeah. she doesn't and she's no, like no, 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 no i just no. give it all i can tell by looking at her she she yeah. would never I give away well, the you're farm. educational that's the thing is you want to first educate and then you supply products if they want yeah to use them right i actually um i showed it to you a little bit earlier but i have a tattoo right here that says to serve and I got that tattoo to always because you know my company's really big now and I there's opportunities just hitting me all day long and for just new things and and I always I never want to forget that I started Mm -hmm. yeah in the service industry as an esthetician helping people right and not that I need to be reminded but it's just like I'm proud of the fact that like you know, I'm in the service industry and I'm here to serve and help people. And so, and that, that's always my mission is just like, how can I help serve people, make them again, smarter and give them more education to, so they can have the best skin of their life. Yeah. Like when you said that you dropped everything to go to your client, that's the the first thing I thought was like, and she's like, who else does that? Well, yeah. Like you have your own line. You have Mm -hmm. so many things going on to do that means that you're just still connected with what you started this for. for Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So let's get on to the skincare stuff. So, so free advice. I know. The free (laughs) advice. (laughs) Listen, um, I have questions. Yeah. I'm joking. Okay. So (laughs) as a general rule, I know it's womp womp, but, um, when you hit 30, the party's over. Okay. Oh, so 30, I know. It. I know. So 30, I am starting to realize this. I mean, 30 is around that age when skin aging starts to kick in, yeah, right? All of a sudden you're like, what are these little lines yeah, in my yeah, eyes? Yeah. And so yeah. that's like, so that's usually when people like 30 to like 34 is like when clients are kind of in panic mode because mm-hmm. all of a sudden they're like, I think I need to be doing something because they're seeing right. changes in the yes, skin, right? right? So, um, so I would say like, you know, obviously you want to start as young as possible. That's what but I was going to ask. But when? Yeah. So, I mean, just now, okay. today, right? When you <laughs> can. Yeah, because you're working with Riverdale girls. So, obviously, you're starting people to, you know, get in that routine yeah. very well, young. Skincare but skincare yeah. is so big now that, yeah. like, you don't even have to twist anyone's arm to take oh, care no. of their oh, skin. No. Everybody's yeah. into it, right? Many years ago, people, like, were very reactive about it. The whole, like, preventative thing. That yeah, just yeah, wasn't yeah. a thing. Mm-hmm. And so, so, I would say, so there's lots of things. Like, so, first and foremost, you know talking about sunscreen right like I knew that is the most important thing ever so I excuse me I realized sorry hold on Oh, you're good. You know, as as she says sunscreen, I immediately thought of all the times I was in a tanning bed. (laughs) Oh, I know. Well, I know when I was younger because I don't do it anymore. 
but like I'll do the fake tan as you can see. Fake tan, right. my hands. Yeah, well, and and I don't tan. want anyone feeling guilty. Let me yeah. say this about what they did, right? Like, sure. Yeah, you'll never. I've never heard a client ever say like, "I wish I spent more time in the tanning bed when I was younger." You yeah. Know? yeah, yeah. You'll never hear that. But I mean, the you know, like, don't kill yourself about that, right? Yeah. Like, oh, it was let's a work on it now. Whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna and, fix it now. Right, but also. Um, your skin can repair itself. So I always like think about like smokers, like when people stop smoking, their lungs repair themselves. Right. Yeah. And same with the skin. If you're not hitting it with sun, um, the skin can repair itself. The skin, I mean, like, think about you cut yourself on your yeah. arm, right? Like you don't have to do anything. Your skin will heal yeah. itself. So that's important to always remember is that like your skin is working for you. Your body's working for you. You know, as long as you don't have an immune deficiency disorder where you might have a hard time healing or something, but your skin, when there's damage, it's always going to he- try to repair itself. But the key is you don't want to keep putting damage yeah. on it. Right. Yeah. So, well, and you probably want to take care of it too. Cause if you don't take care of a cut, the right, right way for it's sure. gonna get worse yeah, right course, yeah. yeah so the most important so let's kind of get like the sunscreen rules down here so first okay. of all sunscreen is the number one best anti-aging product on the planet bar none wow. right yeah. number one and because the number one reason why we age it's not genetics it's not oh i'm so, i'm i'm you know my grandmother has good skin so i'm going to be mm-hmm. great no it's not smoking like i mean smoking won't you know smoking's not great but like alcohol whatever yeah sure. it is uv light so as we're sitting here right we're yeah. getting it girls right yeah. here right and right so here? right yeah. here yeah wow. because yeah because it's coming it's, yeah. it's coming UV, through it's uv, UV. Yeah. right the uva is what gives wrinkles and premature skin aging and so the best thing you can do is wear a sunscreen every day but make sure you're getting it right and let me explain so most people have well, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, I'll, you know, oh, I'm not outside. I work inside all day or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. if you see any form of daylight, doesn't matter if it's in December or, you know, August, whatever. So even through daylight, office window. Office window, car window, like any daylight. Oh. So, I mean, from sun up to sundown, you should That's have crazy. sunscreen on your face. That's why the Asians wear the gloves when they drive. Right, exactly. No, it's not. Yes. So is it really? Yeah. Yes, so I'm serious. Raise your hands? I'm serious. Yeah. Oh, they, for sure. They know. Well, also because, <laughs> in, they have the, they because in their culture also, it's yes. all about having really fair skin, but if also Asians are known to get a lot of brown spots and pigmentation, yeah. and that's where they're preventing oh. it. Oh, well. but wow. they do so, that because it's oh, still yeah. coming through the window. Yeah, well, they wear umbrellas. They're walking down the street with umbrellas, the whole thing. I've never thought of that. And so, 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 but the problem with wearing sunscreen every day is finding one that's compatible. I was right? just going to ask you this because, because yeah, so many problems and mm-hmm. whatever. So you have to find one that you like, right? Like mm-hmm. shameless plug, Renee Rouleau. Yes, this please. Is one of our best sellers. So it's yes, lightweight. It's, it's lightweight. Doesn't pill on her makeup. Dries to a matte finish. I just so brought a couple products issue. in yeah, my no, travel bag. Just I don't know if so I'm it up, but yeah, no worries. But that's a really great. good one for. People that yeah. can't stand the heaviness on the skin. Yeah, so That's my lighter. issue. Yeah, it's lighter. Okay. You wear it every day. But here's the key. This is the key to sunscreen is you have to apply it generously. And so that's what happens if you find one that's a little greasy. Guess what? You're going to put it on sparingly because mm-hmm. you're like, oh, I don't like the way it feels. Mine always breaks me out no matter what right. I use. And, and they're notorious for yeah. that. So yeah. this is why this is one of our best sellers because I work a lot with acne and adult acne. And this is like great. So this so, one says SPF 30. Right. Is so, that the minimum? So here's the thing. SPF, I, SPF is all based on, depending on how much you put on. So it's like a lot of people are like, oh, I wear an SPF 50. But if you're using it sparingly, sparingly, it doesn't matter. But a 30 compared to a 50 is less than 1%. The 50 gives less than 1% more protection than a oh. 30. So yeah, so people wow. are like, oh, it's almost double, right? But that's yeah, yeah, not yeah. the case. So sunscreen only works if it's applied generously. So it's okay. less about the number. Okay. I mean, you want to use a S- minimum of SPF 15. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't that's what I was going to ask. That. But yeah, minimum some... of SPF 15. But well, the FDA is actually trying to ban anything over a 50 because no one's showing any scientific proof that it actually yeah so people more. will be like oh i put yeah. that on oh, like, yeah. still no. 100 so, on i'm good right yeah. so you have Forever. to apply it generously right okay. that's the thing but that's why you have to find one that that is compatible with your skin that is going to break you out and you can do that so yeah. so you're going to apply it every day generously then do a second application onto your neck girls don't oh, neglect neck. your neck. You oh. will. I mean, it's. I learned that late. Yeah, we, I, I still. Ne- late. I still so, neglect it, and I have a lot of. I've always had a lot of wrinkles. Yeah, like you know, just on my I neck. Mean, no, like I'm deep. Not yes. No, but I'm no. <laughs> oh, always, yeah. No, I've always had <laughs> deep, deep we wrinkles we on my girl. neck. I had a student. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had a student of mine in the past because I am a military instructor, yes. and he went. I was talking about the time I got shanked, and he goes, "Did you get stabbed on the neck?" And I was like, "Excuse me." 
Guys he's are like, so he's good. Like, you got, he's like, it guys looks like you have so a lot. Guys are so great with just really letting you know what it <laughs> he's is. Like you have a lot of deep looking wrinkles on the neck and I was like no it was my side thank you (laughs) so I guess yeah the neck don't neglect it yeah and so but most people what they do when they do wear sunscreen is they'll put it on the face and then carry a little whatever's left over on the fingertips again it's about like how much you apply so get in the habit of doing one application of the face then do a squeeze it out of the tube do a second application neck sides of the neck right and so um so and then here's my other tip which is wear makeup and let me explain when i i had my this one i had my because i do it every day every day right so i'm in a profession where people don't want to have to wear makeup they come to me and go i'm hiding under my makeup i have acne i have brown spots whatever and they think my job is to make them not just have to wear makeup i mean yeah right don't get me wrong i want to do that no no and that and that is my job because i don't want someone to feel like they have to wear makeup but i'm here to tell you that makeup is your friend and let me explain so when i was um my first skincare salon was up in Boston and I had that for five years. I opened that when I was 21 and sold my half and wanted to kind of have a lifestyle change and moved to Dallas and started, I started with the skincare spa in Dallas and then started my skincare line shortly afterward. But when I moved to Texas, I assumed that all the women would have more sun damaged skin, right? Mm-hmm. There's more sun, more opportunity yeah. to be outside and all of, the women that were like 60 plus, which are people, you know, that that's really the time when you're showing a lot of aging, all these older women had such beautiful skin. And I was like, huh? you know, they should have more sun damage. Like yeah. why is their skin so pretty? Well, what I realized soon after was some of the older clients, cause they're a little more like old school, traditional. They, um, they wear makeup all the time after the facial, they would, go and put their makeup on right at the end of the facial. And most people would Are be like, that's to do that. Oh my well, god! I mean, ideally you want to kind of let your skin quote unquote Just for a breathe, second. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but like they would literally be in the bath, put it on. These were also clients that some of these older traditional women, they go to bed after their husbands. <laughs> so they don't, he doesn't have to see her with makeup on <laughs> and then wake I up saw this. before, I used to do that with guys I used to date before him to have their makeup on. And so, but my point is, wow. is so all these women had really beautiful skin. They also wore makeup. Well, we didn't know back in the 50s, 60s, 70s that that sun was the cause of aging, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So if all these women are in their 60s or 70s, like they grew up in the yes. 50s, you know, whatever, right? Well, Max Factor came out with like pancake makeup kind of in the 50s. But for whatever reason, Southern women wear more makeup, right, than Northern women when I lived up in Boston. Mm-hmm. And so, so my theory is that all through the six, 50s, 60s, 70s and beyond – all these women were wearing makeup all the time and guess what all that uv light was never skin. touching their skin and that's my theory of why they had such that have such beautiful skin is because they always wore makeup because they weren't wearing sunscreen Do i've noticed like- this in my own life though like because i so yeah. I, get, I get really insecure sometimes when i go to the beach and i have a broken out face or it's not you know perfectly you know flawless and so i'll put makeup on and i notice that my whole body gets tan except for my face right, and i have right. spf on yeah, too yeah. and then of course by the time i get back inside i'm like why is my face so pale right but luckily well it's, it's helped right and so oh sorry i didn't mention this part the reason all foundation makeup or this max factor pancake makeup uh-huh. has titanium dioxide in it which is a natural sunscreen oh so okay, that's, that's so what that's i was what gonna the ask is. is like yes. they were putting different things in it right back in the well, day well it was still ti- titanium dioxide okay, okay. and that's that's and a sunscreen that's what it ingredient. is yes so basically today. so foundation if you use a foundation and it doesn't say it has spf in it it's because the company didn't Did have that? it tested and marketed as that but oh, all but it all but, is but if any if any foundation which they all do have titanium dioxide in it that's a sunscreen ingredient so basically oh, wow so the point is is yep. think of sun uh, think of foundation as your friend mm-hmm. now you don't want to have a foundation that's going to clog your pores and all of that so mm-hmm. on my blog if people type in the word foundation i did a whole thing on the best foundations for oily um, oily acne prone skin because People, get, I mean, I mean, uh, foundations are notorious for causing bumps. They are in primers and things like that. So yeah. I did this whole, I talked about how I did it, but I did an oil migration test uh-huh. where I put like all these foundations on a paper and you wait for 20, like a little dab of it, a little dollop oh of it. And you wait for 24 hours and see how much oil spreads. And so there was a whole like method to my madness. And then I narrowed it down to which ones are the best ones. And so, uh, oh my anyway, God, so I could use that forever ago that. when I went through every product in the world, I love it. right? Yeah, right. So anyway, 
so yeah so go to people can go to my blog yeah. type in foundation and you'll find that post um but you can also use if people don't want to use a liquid foundation they can also use powder so like That's what now I there, use. there's mineral powders that are spf tested but any powder any kind of translucent powder or something that also has titanium dioxide in it so sometimes so like sometimes in the morning if i'm going on a conference call sometimes i like to walk and talk outside so i'll go for a walk and I, if i you know i roll out of bed if i haven't time to wash my face yet or whatever i'll just dust on i have some revlon cheapy powder or something doesn't have s doesn't say it has spf in it but i know but it, it's protecting no. mm-hmm. me so i'll just throw that on put a kind of a generous layer of it and then go outside and i know i'm protected until i get back inside so you use revlon yeah, well, when I, I use that, I don't use it for like rigor. Daily, makeup. she's just it's, saying it's like, more okay. just my quick. But I that was my get next like question is stuff. like um, this new thing of like all natural makeups and all these things that are ruining your skin. Is that is there a lot of weight behind that, or do they all kind of have the same thing that they always have had? You mean kind of like the toxic clean beauty? Yes, movement? and all this yeah. clean beauty thing, and yeah. like you know, just all the chemicals that are in makeup, and make sure you're putting this oh, on your skin. I've yeah. just right. been doing it my whole life yeah you mean being uh, cautious about what you put no, on your skin just putting like whatever whatever Me i mean I, my makeup regime as you get older you kind of start spending more money on better stuff sure, right? Yeah, right but i i i guess i wanted that's what a question i wanted to ask you is like how much weight do you it sounds like you put a little revlon thing you're not mm-hmm. too worried you know what i mean yeah. like it's yeah. more what you're doing underneath the makeup yeah is for that, sure okay. yeah i i i mean a powder that I'm just going to throw on sure. and I'll leave on for 20 minutes. Don't is worry no about deal. that. Yeah. Um, foundation that's on the skin all day that could clog that's the pores. Huge. That's what you want to look yeah. at. Um, but skincare is also all the first layers, right? Yeah. It's kind of like you're just sandwiching and everything on top. on top. And so yeah. you do want good quality skincare products. And, you know, I kind of like to think of my line as like clean science. So mm-hmm. we kind of, we don't use synthetic fragrances, like synthetic that. dyes. Oh, I can't do that. Um, you yeah. know, all, all sorts of things that I don't think are beneficial to the skin. Uh Um, But then we also, at some point, you also need the products to work, right? So it's like, and that's why, especially when when you're getting your 30s, you're like, I mean, having, like, I'll never have an organic skincare line because it's just like, I need the performance for my Mm -hmm. clients. And it's just like, so like when you're in your 20s and your skin is flawless and perfect, you can use whatever. Yeah, you can do whatever. Right. But at some point you need to speed up the metabolism of the cells and you need it, like, you need things that really drive results. And so, so I find that a lot of people like, they're like, oh my God, you know, like they're all like, I only use, and yep. they're all like, yep. you know, and they're 12. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so that's the, <laughs> but, like, then, but then they're like, okay, like yeah. give me the good on. stuff. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah. the point. It's like, hair, it's like hair dye. So I went to a cosmetology school. You, you touch on yeah, esthetician a little yeah. bit, yeah, but for sure. you know, you don't do it as in depth, Yeah. but the same thing with hair dye, right? People want like this mm. all natural and I go, right. well, do you no. want it to yeah. color your hair? You want to look shitty? You know? So there's that healthy balance of not formaldehyde yeah but right. also sure. not yeah. like nothing yeah right. right yeah and so my line you know to me it's kind of the best of both worlds best of that. nature best of science I love that. um and i think that's you know that's kind of what everyone wants right they don't right. want to put anything no, unnecessarily yeah. bad and right. feel like they're but something's they want it gonna to work. be yeah but they want it to work and especially yeah. when it comes to acne like you know you need mm-hmm. performance ingredients yeah. in there you know they but they're not not gonna be bad for you yeah. you know like yeah. there's a way to I hear very so safe. many different things I feel like with that because when I had acne I looked through so many different blogs and just people saying stuff and some people were going Accutane and other people were going no that's terrible put that in your body like try to do it the natural way through like willow bark and yeah and right. the, you know yeah. silica was it psilis? salicylic acid yeah thank you yeah, I'm yeah, like yeah. I can't even say it but all this stuff so for me I'm like I don't know what is supposed to work yeah and what can work right so yeah. um so yeah, so then let's touch on a lot yeah. of people get hormonal acne, yeah. right? Okay. This is big in the 30s. So typically hormonal acne is going to be chin and jawline. That's where a lot of people are going to get it. But also it's more the cystic blemishes, mm-hmm. like the hard sore knots. That's what kind of the underground ones. That's what people tend to get more in their 30s yeah. from yes. hormones. Those are the worst ones. Too. Those are the worst ones because it's like it's you under there. You can't do and they and don't. Well, they don't go away. Yeah. And then right. by the time they no matter if you don't touch it or if they pop on its own, it's sometimes mine always turns into a scar. Right. Right. And they Somehow. Do. Yeah. So what happens is and so this is like important for everyone to understand blemishes. So. The biggest mistake that I see with people is, is how they handle their blemishes. Mm. So <clears throat> the minute people get something, well, first of all, not all blemishes are equal, right? Yeah. They're going to do different things. They have different strains of bacteria. They're going to respond to products differently. Some of them are going to stay as a bump under the skin, hang out there for a while, be annoying. Your body eventually reabsorbs that infection so they don't come out. Or it's going to come to the surface and come into a whitehead. Um, and uh, so 
you need to understand the life cycle, what type of blemish it is and the life cycle of that because you need to be addressing it with certain products at the right stage. So the biggest mistake so that people make wow. is the biggest mistake that people make is the minute they get a blemish, they're going to use some really drying spot treatment on it and dry it out. Okay. Yeah. It gives the illusion. Yeah. So yeah, this is what's yeah. Toothpaste. <laughs> right. So, um, what happens is it gives the illusion of it working because when you dry out the skin with a really harsh um, spot treatment, it looks less red because dry skin, the, the cells are opaque. And so they're not as see-through. So it makes it look like it's better, but it, it's not, yeah. right? So what happens is if you spot treat any blemish the minute it comes up, if it's one that wants to go back down under, you're not using the right treatment anyway mm -hmm. because you dried out the skin for an infection that's 10 miles down under the skin. So now you're left with dry skin on top with still a bump underneath. So that didn't, there's no game changing there. But if it is one that wants to come out to the skin, uh, out of the skin, you know, that infection, you know, like I said, your body's always healing. When you get a blemish, like your, your body's going to do what it wants to do. It's going to take care of it for you. If it does want, if it's one that does want to come out, the reason why it does is because that's your body way of saying, Hey, I have some infection here and I want to come out the surface of the skin. If you immediately spot treatment with, with it being, uh, with it doesn't it, get to actually, it's, well, it starts to come oh. up and now all of a sudden there's a trap door there, right? And your blemish is going, Hey, yo, I want to come out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now oh there's God. all this dead skin under here. And I'm like, hello, get me out of here. It's like when you learn about bed bugs, I've been right? doing You're this like, wrong oh my God. for so long. <laughs> They're all there. They're all there. <laughs> They're all there. Yeah. 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 So basically, so now it can't get out and it's going to sit there longer because it's trying to find an opening mm -hmm. and it's like you just shut it down. So the longer any blemish stays in the skin... You know, it's expanding the the, the skin tissue. Mm -hmm. It's um it's setting off a response for pigment cells for an in injury, and that's the biggest thing. Is we want a blemish to go away as fast as possible yeah. with the least amount of scarring. But the thing is, most blemishes last you know five days, four, three days, yeah. seven days. But the scar because it hung out or because you picked it or did you know? And I'll get into more what you should do with a blemish, but. The scar could be for two months, right? And oh, then some also for like a year or two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, right, right. Depending on how deep it was, but also UV light. Just so you know, UV light keeps melanin cells awake. So if you want your I post breakout that. marks to go down, you also need to be wearing sunscreen because any UV light that gets on oh, that keeps like, those yeah, melanin yeah. cells. One of the worst, but years you can do on that. Yeah, then I'm like, oh, I right. Don't yeah, know you wear it all over your face yep. as your moisturizer. Perfect. So basically, so my best advice for the blemishes is like sit tight, hold your horses, don't jump on it. Cause we all want to control things, right? Yeah. We all think we're having control. You want to just let it do its thing. Okay. Now shameless plug for my line. I have our number one best selling product is called anti bump solution. Mm. And, um, Great name. it's, yeah, it, it's in, I have a crazy story on my blog about it. I don't really know how it works, but it's our number one bestseller. It helps. <laughs> I love it that. It helps. Cystic, it just does. It just does. <laughs> Actually, miracle. I started I mean, long story short. Yeah. But, Basically, um, it's for cystic blemishes, the okay. hard, sore, hormonal ones that people get. Because your solution is is just ride it out, or go get a cortisone injection, right? And yeah. those, and that's it, right? There's mm -hmm. literally, or go on Accutane, right? Yeah, and, and that's hard um, or antibiotics or mm -hmm. whatever, which people don't want to have. To be As on I don't do any of those, I just it. pick at it and hope it goes away. Right. <laughs> and so, and so. If anybody struggles with the deep under the skin ones, you put it on, and it cuts the recovery time up on average by 50% wow. and it will in your body reabsorbs it faster. So the minute you get it, you dab it on and it goes away so much faster, which means less pigmentation, yeah. yes. less of an issue. Yes. So well, and um, you can cover it up a little bit more easier too, right? It's not you, as bumpy. That's right. Yeah. Right? And also that's another thing too. You put a drying treatment on it and now the skin is crusty. Yeah. Right. And then you try and to cover it up. Stick. Right. Yep. And it's right. still large on yeah. your face. It's still large it with bad. crustiness on top. Yeah. And oh even my more gosh. Noticeable. So basically what Sexy. I'm getting this so right after. Yeah. So basically, um, you know, from the Rene Rolo line, like I said, use the anti bump and that's going to either make it go down so much faster. Or if it is one that wants to come up it's going to make it much like smaller much less eventful but it's also a non-drying product and that's the key or just don't do anything right just let it do its thing mm -hmm. yeah and let it decide what it's going to do because i mean picking at a cyst isn't going to get you anywhere yeah. mm -mm. And, and that's what you know people feel it right I they're know. like i if feel I something in there out. you yeah, know yeah, yeah. and um oh, and, oh. and and just for the record like you know people are like oh how did you become an esthetician and, and my grandmother was a hairstylist she owned her own hair salon and so that was the inspiration be but between us girls 
girls when I found out that there was a profession that people would actually pay me to yeah. pick at their skin. Oh, do you oh, love you it? Like picking at skin? Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh. Nice. I love that. <laughs> you kidding? Picking at yeah, pimples right? and like yeah, yeah, everything else. That's what it's the best. <laughs> I love it. So I was like, like why do I feel like so many girls like this I love though, it. Right? I love oh, yeah. It. I have clients oh, that it? will literally <laughs> like pull a mirror out during the facial and because they, they want to see it. It. get look. the enjoyment that I'm getting. Yes. Right? Yes. That's awesome. So anyway, so, but yeah, so I was a skin picker, you know, I mean, but a bad, like I wasn't responsible, you know, but I eventually learned a response responsible way to pick yeah, and yeah. and the key is so again you know don't touch it let it ride its course but if it is one that wants to go out you know come out the surface again don't dry it out don't dry it out let that come out then when it touches the surface of the skin ideally you can go to like Walgreens or CVS and get a lancet you know which diabetics use to like mm-hmm. pierce their fingers get a lancet pierce a little hole because you want it to come I've out right before, yeah. and That's what you I know want it gives it a yeah. pathway and especially if which I don't want people to do this, but if you have dried it out with harsh things, it still it can't, needs to get out. It can't get there because yeah, now there's all, that, so yeah. if you pierce a little hole in it, then it's like, oh, there's a little place for me to come out. Get it so, over with. Yeah. yeah. So basically, but you want to wait until it's ripe, until it's on the very tip of the yeah. surface, pierce it, gently squeeze it, and then it hits the road, then kill it with the spot treatment, right? Okay. That's when you want to yep. then dry it because that's going to get into the pore lining, dry out the remaining infection that's in there, yep. shut it down, dry it up, close up the skin. So that's when you want to do it. Mm-hmm. And so um, uh, in my line, we have what's called the Zikare kit that has four spot, uh, four treatments um, for every phase. So like, nice. and then it has lancets in it as well. Plus it has step-by-step instructions. So basically it's pretty cool oh because God. you first put on an anti-bump, hopefully it goes away, but if it does come to the surface, it has lancets, finger cots to safely extract. Then it has a spot treatment to address oh it God, afterward. We're getting this. I know. I was we're say, getting this. And then, Wait, finger cots? Is that so that you yeah. don't just keep, yeah, you keep you know your, your fingers own clean? Fingers, like, no, I know. Yeah. Nails yeah, will yeah, cut it yeah, and you stuff. Want, yeah. 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 And so oh my you, have, gosh. you have stuff on your nails. Yeah. 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 Make it more dirty. There. Yeah. And then we also have in there our daytime blemish gel, which is a daytime treatment that you put on any blemish and it puts a invisible seal over it so that your foundation and primers don't what? mess with that. Oh and God, then the last amazing. thing it has, which is for the aftermath of the blemishes called post breakout fading gel. Uh-huh. So once, once it all, once it's all healed, now you want that discoloration to go yes. away. So yeah. it's pretty cool because it has all the instructions, but if you get this and follow this and step by step, your blemishes will go away. So, so much faster. Oh my gosh, and with this this are you like freaking, I'm freaking out. I know out I am too. Bit. How much is just this? this whole just hit. I think curiosity. it's like 150. That's totally. Oh my gosh. I used done, to pay yeah. done 150. I think oh, for like a whole Accutane, line. Just all of that yeah. stuff is really, well, really oh my expensive. Gosh, super you know, expensive. and here's the thing. Like I, as good as I am, I can never, I can't make it where someone's never going to break out again. For right. Sure. Like no, 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 I have yeah. great products that are going to really create an environment. Right. There's so many other, you know there's no cure for acne period i mean if there was we'd all know about it right yeah. and so but if but my goal is to try to get people to break out less yes but what we can control is what we do when we have a blemish and and that's the biggest mistake that people make is they they're picking it too soon they're drying it out they're you, you know this. so so if if people don't get the zik hair kit which is fine but if people don't get it my best advice is just leave it alone oh, yeah, right gosh. and then when it I does know. come it's up so hard i have zero self-control right. when it comes and then to when that, it does yeah. come up yeah. gently remove it yeah. but wait until it's literally on the tippity top yes. of the skin yeah. you know sometimes people are like oh i see a little bit like what in doubt wait an extra 24 yeah. hours like yes. because a blemish is like um when you look at this kind of shape it starts out kind of bigger and then it narrows yep. kind of like a t- tip of a mountain so you want the opening to be the smallest when you yes. actually pop it so yes. it's still in the middle or of the, the like skin s- the, the thinnest layer of skin to pop that through too. right that, okay, that okay. Too, right yeah, yeah right. and so you just you know the longer you wait the less scarring yeah. you have and the people's biggest concern is post breakout marks that's why people that's feel why like they have to wear anymore. makeup because of the discoloration right yeah. so yeah so hormonal acne is big in the 30s um, I have a lot of great blog posts. If you, if you type hormonal adult hormonal, you know, whatever, um, into the blog, you'll get yeah. tons of this. I also have a blog post called how to get rid of a blemish fast, which talks about the step-by-step mm-hmm. kind of reiterating what I, what I've talked about today. Love it. Um, but a big thing for hormones is, um, dairy, 
right? Like cheese and, I and ice that. cream and all and that. I, and so, we know it, right? Like yeah. We, deep down, I we know. all know I it. Know it. I, I just, know. Right. I love cheese. So, but that's, and that's like, the biggest. But a lot of people, yeah. So a lot of people, when it comes to breakouts, they're like, oh, but I eat so healthy or, or what food shouldn't I eat? And, right. and really the one, I mean, some people could maybe be affected by sugar, but I think that's a really small percentage of people yeah. in my experience. But dairy is kind of a big one. That's the big culprit. But yeah. Not so if people are clogging, mm-hmm. what would you say? Clogging, it feels like, yeah. right? Like it's something Yeah, that, well, it's... Yeah. Um, um, people are lactose intolerant. Mm-hmm. Dairy is hard to digest. Yeah. Your skin acts as an excretory system to get rid of the things that don't agree in the body. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so if you are somebody that, but but specifically, it's when it's more cystic in chin and jawline yeah. that could be dairy. But then otherwise, you know, the million dollar question is why do I get break? You know, why do I break out? And and that's always the hard thing, right? We're all looking. You know, people are like, oh, is it because my phone or I'm putting I my know, hands on my? If, if only it were that simple, right? I know. That's yeah, so there's just like, so many different factors. There I think are. That's the thing. And what's and what's really hard too is that you know, being an esthetician for the, 30 years, there's way more adult acne than there ever was. Right. I didn't see this 20 years ago. And what is that? Ago. Pollution, right? Di- like I, diet, all the. Yeah, so I mean, any of these stuff right. we're putting on our yeah. skin, the chemicals we're putting the above, in stuff. or or something we don't even know, yeah. right? And yeah. so that's what makes it hard. And so, but but you know, uh, some of the skin types in my line, the key is is um, to if you are kind of more occasional hormonal breakouts, is all about like making sure you're using products that kind of create an environment where less bacteria, less breakouts are likely, mm-hmm. but not to the point of, you know, drying you out. Yeah. And so finding that balance, but again, that's kind of the skin type system that I've developed. So, um, we need to, I mean, we have time. We need to get you on a plane cause you're a traveling esthetician. Well, yeah, at some point. Time. But I do, do. want to go, um, I wanted you, so, uh, sunscreen, mm-hmm. you said, yeah. Number one, number one. Yeah. So I want to so, figure out what else. Number two. Yeah. Do you have. So, yeah. So uh, what else is good? So. So this is just like an anti-aging for anyone over 30. Or like, like things that you would. Right. Your, your top five. Like, yeah. Do these things. Yeah. Keep your so, skin hydrated or you have a very nice glow. Yes. Which I always <laughs> want without looking oily. Right. So um, oh, there's so many things. So ex- if you want to glow, exfoliate your skin regularly. Yes. So exfoliation could be gentle facial scrub um it could be an exfoliating acid that you like an acid serum a liquid acid toner people should be exfoli not too much you don't want to exfoliate every day but oh. make sure to get in some sort of exfoliation about yeah. three times a week okay. because yeah. because um dry cells are opaque cells and they don't bounce light right and so if you want your skin to kind of reflect light you want to have those opaque you know cells off the skin Mm -hmm. so you want to exfoliate regularly that's super important does it Um, help uh collagen uh, reboost i don't remember not retinol is better for that i'll talk about that in a second um but uh it's it's you're stimulating cell turnover and anytime you make old cells go away your it sends a a signal to make new cells so Mm -hmm. anytime and cell generation slows down with age so in theory it's you know it's helping the greater good um but in the 30s is the time when people should get on a retinol product i'll tell you a quick story um their uh prescription retinoids like retin-a was Mm -hmm. the original name it was fda approved for acne and so i knew a doctor um that was that got it fda approved for wrinkles and the reason why he did was um he was the chief of dermatology at mass general hospital and he would um prescribe like all through the 70s or 80s or whatever um he would prescribe this retin-a cream for his teenage patients or whatever and he said listen i'm going to give you this cream it comes in a tube i want you to use it every night you have to use it really sparingly because it's going to dry out your skin. So he would squeeze a little amount and he'd say, just use this amount. And he would put it on the back of his hand and demonstrate. Mm-hmm. And day in and day out, he was treating this one hand mm-hmm. with this. Oh my gosh. And all of a sudden and his it was... hand was looking younger and less brown spots. <laughs> yes. So That's every time amazing. I would see him, I'd be story. like, show me wow, your, your hand. <laughs> and he would show me them one next to the other. Yeah. yeah. 10 years difference. Wow. 10 years difference. So in yeah. 1994, and I mean, I remember all of this when this went on, uh, but in 1994, it became FDA approved for the treatment of sun damage and you know wrinkles yeah. and all of that but i saw with my very own eyes like mark how difference. well it works so um and now you hear a lot about retinol it's such a buzzy ingredient um yeah. but so everybody should start on a retinol um okay. i have one in my line millions of lines have them but start on a retinol now and then eventually work up to a prescription and okay. because 
you know, there are, you know, it's, there are side effects with it. There is some dryness and that's kind of like the price you have to pay. But if you kind of start with a regular retinol for a while, then you kind of, your skin gets a little used to it. And then slowly you can start incorporating a, a prescription. Okay. Um, some people can't ever use the prescription like me. Like I get eczema on my eyelid, eyelids, even if I don't use it near my eyelids, but it creates that response. And so, um, so I do, you know, I, my retinols worked well cause I've used it for years, but, okay. um, but yeah, so that's one of the ingredients that people really need to look into. Um, but I have it's, a question with it, it's a game changer. So I got a prescription for it. Right. Mm-hmm. And they told me just to start off, just kind of like you were told, just put a little, um, moisturizer and stuff in it. Yeah. Now when I, um, went to the gynecologist because, you know, I was talking about them cause I was pregnant at the time and talking about them, what I can and cannot use. Yes. Uh, they didn't know I was on a retin-A. Yeah. And so I told them that I was on it and they were like, get off of that immediately. Right. You, can't use while you're um, you, you shouldn't use that while you're trying to get pregnant. You shouldn't use it while you are pregnant because it's too much vitamin A, I guess, mm-hmm. to could have an effect on the fetus. Sure. So is there, because I'm currently not using it now because we're still trying to get pregnant. Sure. So is there something that women can use that is Exfoli- similar? Exfoliating acids. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like an acid serum under a moisturizer a couple nights a week. Uh-huh. Because that's, I mean... Retin-A or ret- retinoids or retinol, they're not technically exfoliants, um, but in, a, in theory, they're kind of exfoliating from inside out by pushing cells to the surface. And, okay. But yeah, so I would just use just exfoliating use acid serum. But yeah, you also uh, probably don't want to be using anything with salicylic acid in it, so make sure it's just probably like glycolic and lactic acid or something like that. Okay. And that's just like a few times a week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple nights a week. I, I have a whole range of different exfoliating acid serums. But yeah, so that, that just helps with the texture, right? Okay. Make pores look smaller and that sort of thing. So yeah, so I, I would do that. But the thing also with retinol and and prescription retinoids is of all the products, that's the one that you want to use consistently. So like if people are like, oh yeah, I just okay. use it once in a while when I remember, it's not going to do anything. Okay. It's kind of like Every day. doing sit-ups, right? Mm-hmm. If you only do them once a month, like you're not going to get anywhere. Yeah. So that's one of those products that you have to be using consistently. Probably not every day. I actually have a, if people go to the blog and type in retinol, I have tons of posts on how okay. to use it, how to use it to try to not get the harsh side effects, how to slowly work into it, all that so- sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, slowly is more the prescription, not an over-the-counter. But okay. um but yeah, something like that would be great. Um, uh, hydration levels, like you always want a good moisturizer, yeah. but you know, for your skin type, you know, trying to find you know, maybe something that's oil free if you're still kind of prone to breakouts. Um, I'm also a big fan of using toners and they're kind of misunderstood. Ooh, really? So toners, you, you want them alcohol free. You don't want them to dry you out, but toners are really good for hydrating the skin. Mm-hmm. And so after you like when you take I a shower, I know me too. Right. I, well, mine always dries they, me out because they're astringent and they have alcohol. Yeah. but you want one alcohol got free. It, got okay. it. As long okay. as it doesn't have alcohol okay. in it, you're fine. But think of like your shower, your glass shower door, all that cruddy like yes. film stuff. So that's chlorine salts and minerals from your tap water. So toners help remove that, oh. gets that off. Toners are um, extremely hydrating when you leave it wet on the skin and then you put on your next product, you seal in all that moisture. So especially somebody like you, Tiffany, that's, Mm -hmm. you don't need oil, right? You need water. Like you still feel like you get dry sometime and tight, but we want to focus more on water because we know oil is probably not your friend topically, Mm -hmm. right? So it's a great way when you leave it damp and then immediately put your next product on, it seals in all that water. So you get really plump and hydrated. But then also when you leave your toner damp, the skin is 10 times more perfect. Permeable. So when you use like a vitamin C serum in the morning, which ideally people should use under sunscreen, it actually um, may penetrate deeper to the skin so you even get better results. Yeah. So toners are misunderstood. People are like, oh, yeah. I don't really get what they do or whatever, but I'm a huge fan of toners. Um, I think it's really important. Another tip I have for people is, um, particularly people who live in dry climates where it's snow and all that in the winter, but every time after you wash your skin, you have a 60 second window before mm-hmm. moisture evaporation will start. And especially if it's a dry climate, that you know, for sure that's 60 seconds, but if if it's, if there's humidity in the air, you can maybe wait a little longer, but the point is you don't want to get moisture evaporation. So after you wash immediately go into your next product, don't wait. So when people go, Oh "Oh my God, like every cleanser I wash with is making my skin feel really tight. The tightness may not be from the cleanser. It could, you know, even if they say, Oh, I'm using the most gentle cleanser ever, but like it could be because they're waiting. So do your routine fast right away. You'll want to let a serum kind of penetrate in maybe for like, 
60 seconds before you put a moisturizer on, but, um, but don't wait after cleansing because when your skin is wet with water, um, it attracts water from the skin. They go to the driest area. So it's like a vacuum effect. It's, it's a process called osmosis. Um, so you just kind of want to work quickly. So that's like a good little tip that people can use. Vitamin C serum. Good. Vitamin C serum. Great for pigmentation. This is one of my lines. Do you have one? Okay. Yeah. Vitamin C and E treatment, but all, you know, most skincare lines have them because it's so proven to work. Vitamin C is good for collagen building, good for putting melanin cells to sleep. So anybody Mm -hmm. who has discoloration, brown spots, freckles, and they're trying to keep uh, brown, I mean, post breakup marks is considered that too. Um, So it's good for putting those melanin cells at rest to try to get them to chill out. Good for brightening. So really good for getting a glow. Um, Also talking about kind of a glow. Don't um, underestimate makeup, right? Like, yeah. I mean, makeup, I mean, we all Let's want our honest. skin to glow, yeah. but like sometimes makeup is like, the, if you want it to just thing. radiate, yeah. Yeah. Highlighter. <laughs> want it, yeah. just find a bomb ass highlighter. Exactly. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I mean, that's like, that's going to get yeah. you that, you know? So, so if you had to put together in order, right? So I wash my face. Um, what do I do next after I wash Toner, my face? Cleanse, what am I tone, putting on? Serum, moisturizer. Okay. Beautiful. So cleanse, makeup. toner, serum moisturizer when do i put the sunscreen that you should have it built into your moisturizer oh, so then okay. it's just a one step so oh, this it. one so my weightless protection is a two in one so you don't have to use an additional one which yeah. is important because a lot of times people will put sunscreen on them they'll put moisturizer but then the moisturizer is kind of eating away at yes. the spf and dissolving it so you may not even be getting the best sun protection um that's why you also don't want to use skin oils during the day because some people use facial oils but again it's going to dissolve and kind of eat away at spf so um you want kind of a two in one have it as your moisturizer then put makeup or a little powder on top and you should be good to go. And then people ask also about reapplying. So, I mean, you're not going to wash your face in the middle of the day and then all of a sudden go yeah. reapply in, in, you know, in your office, yeah. sink at your office, yeah. whatever. So, um, you can just dust on a little powder. That's where some of that powder is coming on. Just do a little dusting and you're good to go. So, I, nice. oh my gosh. Okay. So we, we got talk into, all I know day. All literally day. day. So I feel well, like we I got have a feeling we might have to have her back on because you know what's going to happen is no, all these girls are going to hear. Start this. Well, they can go yeah. to her and then blog. they're going to ask questions too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's no, the best I'm part is that we do on. have that blog. I mean, there's yeah. so many I'm different. Go to after. There's so many skin concerns that we didn't even touch on. You know? Because yeah. There's yeah. Always something dark circles and our eye puffiness. I mean, the but what I want to say is Ooh. having you on is so much right now on Instagram and everything there's this influx of these like 12 year olds telling me what to do with my <laughs> skin and being like all you have to do just a dab just of this some oil on and then a little bit of gloss and you're good to go girl and so I love that no you actually look amazing mm-hmm. oh, you're like thanks. you're so you sound so like authority you know what I mean you're like yeah. doctor well she knows you're, like, what she's talking about you, exactly yeah, obviously yeah thanks. so I feel like we got a lot of good information you are just such an awesome person Thanks. um i love the service like you're now going where to like another client which is amazing um actually i'm hopping were- back to austin for two days okay and then you're I going to la day, i guess yeah and then going to la yeah yeah you're awesome so. we appreciate you so much so oh and then also one quick thing yes. so as i'm gonna go to the airport right after this yes. i always um get i, I always ask. book a window seat yes i do that so too. i can close the shade Ooh. otherwise because when you're, you're, like, when not, you're in the air not. you're up closer to the sun there's yes. more you know uv when you're at thirty thousand feet so i'm always like close yes wait really quick though because we're going to be here we're here in vegas yeah is I know. there any little quick fix it's at dry all as for shit here. puffiness because if my skin's dry or just even when you're hungover so here's the thing with puffiness or something um, you ideally like sleep with an elevated pillow a little bit so it helps with drainage Uh because that's really why people get puffiness in the morning um also a nice hot shower and just like let it kind of really hit your face and i mean not like super hot no no but but i always thought cold yeah yeah. i mean if you're using a moisturizer you're not gonna really get dehydrated afterwards but but then like just like get into the shower and kind of close your eyes and kind of maybe massage and kind of because you're trying to get those fluids out of there yeah so like but the heat helps to dilate vessels to help move with you know with drainage and so a nice hot shower and then just kind of trying to massage around the eyes that can be helpful so So those little eye um mask things do anything like you know the ones that you see at sephora they're cheap well yeah so what just moisturizer right so the second part of it is heat and cold so heat dilates and it helps to move fluid and then cold constricts so after like a hot shower you can either put on some nice cooling gel eye mask or something or maybe do a like uh, put some ice in a in a um, if you get some hotel ice or whatever but um put ice in a sink and then fill up water into a cold ice flash oh there you go because then you've got the dilation and the constricting um, 
gum hemorrhoid cream. Do you remember <laughs> I, that? I have a blog post <laughs> about that. You do? Yeah, okay, yeah, good, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember when people were telling me that. I I'm like, not there's no the, way. The, the short answer is they removed the ingredient that did that, but it oh. didn't work. Oh, really? Yeah, back in the day. I want to say like in Canada, I think they still use that. Oh, so, I need to get some Canadian hemorrhoid I cream. Know. Is that what you're saying? Oh, okay. I need that. Awesome. But I'm telling you though, puffy eyes right now, I feel like can make you look 10 years younger or 10 years older. older yeah. yeah. Um, so it depends. Well, on and then another is. thing real quickly too, is that like at some point if it's chronic puffiness, so the, the idea is that like whatever, when you wake up in the morning, whatever puffiness is still there four hours later, just there. that's just there. Yeah. Right. So it's not the morning stuff. So if it's yeah. three in the afternoon and you're like, Oh, I'm still so puffy, but you're it's always that way at three in the afternoon. At that point, you're having loss of elasticity. And at some point, you ha- might have to look into surgery to just have them remove okay. this. Yeah. Okay. So there's no like fix. There's yeah. not a fix for everything. Exactly. But there's exactly. some things you can do to help. For sure. And also, one last tip on, on under eye puffiness. Don't use too heavy of an eye cream. I purposely formulate my eye products to be on the lightweight side because Smart. if they have too many oils in it um, and then you're yawning at night and then it's picking up the oils and it's all traveling into your eyes, you can actually get puffier from having some eye cream get into your eyes. And yeah. when you are puffy, it stretches out the elasticity of the skin and and that's like a rubber band, right? Like eventually it doesn't spring mm-hmm. back. And so you never want to be more puffy than you need yeah. to. And heavy eye creams can do that. Yeah. And also like yawning. Every time you yawn at night, you go to bed too late, you're yawning, your, your eyes tear. Tearing, tearing, tearing makes your eyes swell. Again, that skin tissue is being stretched. Oh my gosh. And so it's like, that's why you get your beauty sleep and you go to bed early. See? Oh my gosh. This Ross. is beauty sleep is a thing. Let me sleep. Let us Damn sleep. Damn it. Jesus. <laughs> um, you're so awesome. Can you oh tell my gosh, people, I know. Can you tell people really quickly where to find the blog, um, yeah. Instagram, and then your product? Products. Yeah. yeah. So uh, ReneeRelo.com is um, my company page. And then there's blog.ReneeRelo.com. Or if you go to the main site, just click on blog. Okay. Because um, we're going sign, to that. After yeah. Then. Sign up for our emails because you'll get all of my best free advice. Okay. Um, and then I'm on Instagram personally at, at Renee Rouleau. So I talk about skincare somewhere. What, but it's a lot about just my life like yeah. I don't want to be like all promotional on my the personal page yeah. buy this yeah. but, but you travel page. so much and so it's yeah, kind of been interesting like see, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. I you know m- one of my celebrities Camila Mendez who I just said from Riverdale she posted about the facial yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that was fun to share um but then Renee Rillo skincare is the company page so when people want more skin tips and skin advice um they would you would go there so awesome yeah well, oh we're gonna gosh. catch up with you again I in austin i feel like is probably yes. we're yeah. gonna be going to texas i'm gonna get are. that yeah. skin yeah. kit <laughs> like immediately thank you so much for coming You're on awesome. thank you for this having was amazing me. This is such an honor yeah and i know you. for yeah. the great for work sure, the bro are gonna 100 love oh my gosh yeah. we're gonna get so many so, messages thank we'll you. just be like go to her yeah go talk to her thank you i know she's gotta catch the flight i know thank you again thank you see you guys bye yeah, you've been watching every move and plotting your next move on every girl I'm moving on. Yeah, don't show better things to do. Yeah, go buy some fucking shoes.